Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, uh, we will continue our lectures on Kernel filter and we will logically we have derived uh, in the linear domain first uh, followed with uh, discrete time as well and logically we will extend this to uh, something called extended Kernel filter and then followed with a little bit concept on uh, uncentered Kernel filter which, which are typically used uh, these days in practical applications. So, the problem uh, is something like this uh, first is continuous uh, ok before that a little bit recapitulation of uh, what we call as continuous discrete Kalman filter is still in the linear domain but system dynamics can be continuous whereas the measurement is uh, is discrete uh, and that is the one which will actually th this platform is the one which will uh, which will help us for external Kalman filter and all that. So, the problem is like this now the there is a continuous time um, linear system time varying of course, whereas uh, I mean system dynamics is continuous time whereas the measurement equation is discrete time. Okay. Now, here is a kind of a mixed situation, but that is uh, typically real life in real life we have uh, system dynamics represented by differential equations uh, naturally, whereas measurement equations are typically discrete equation where it comes at uh, what each um, sample of I mean sample of measurement sort of thing. So, then uh, here is a w which is actually continuous time. So, it is represented as the, this expression it is uh, q uh, t minus tau ok is the, and where is this uh, ok essentially well we can think of this as something well anyway this is we will we'll not bother about that in the word q k is when t goes t is t k otherwise q k has no meaning actually. But having said that if t is equal to tau then only it is, is 1 otherwise it is 0 basically ok. Remember that then uh, expected value of uh, this quantity v k times v j transpose is r k chronic or delta now. So, unless this uh, k is equal to j everywhere else I mean unless k is equal to j it is 0 if k is equal to j it is 1 actually. So, the using this kind of notation again we will go to the mechanism the idea is again this prediction correction prediction correction like that actually. So, start with some value at t naught uh, minus value which will also assume uh, that is the corrected value ok uh, that is initial guess sort of thing then we propagate it and get a measurement here. So, update it and by the way if you get a measurement at t naught itself then you can update it also here itself and then proceed. So, again uh, so coming back uh, this is the propagation ok then in prediction we predicted but based on the measurement uh, this correction happens here then again we predict and then based on measurement we have uh, update here and things like that actually ok. So, principle is like this uh, propagate the state estimate model forward from t k to t k plus 1 using the initial condition x k hat plus ok and then correct the value from minus 2 plus ok at k plus 1 using the measurement vector y k plus 1. Now, the measurement is available at discrete time steps only ok and hence the continuous time propagation does not involve any measurement information actually that is you can derive it uh, also and it turns out that earlier there was some uh, I mean it uh, it had some measurement information as well actually if you, if you remember the previous lectures and all that, but now it does not actually. So, p dot uh, takes a rather relatively simpler expression like this uh, uh, right in in this form actually. So, we have this uh, now the expression for p dot we is something that we need to derive and uh, let us say we have this x dot is something like this and the x dot is this form because noise cannot be taken into propagation equation. So, we drop the noise term while uh, operating on the prediction mode. So, obviously, the, the error between that is nothing but this x dot minus x dot which turns out if you take the difference between that b u b will go 
the rest of the terms will become something like a times x minus x eight, which is a times x tilde plus z times w, something like this. So again, this is a time varying input. So time varying input, uh, we can uh, solve this x set of t. Okay, using this, uh, but remember these are all time varying systems, so can't use exponential term, but we can always use state transition matrix. So state transition matrix phi t t naught, you put it back here and then get a solution for that. Then uh, R W X tilde okay, turns out to be okay, expected value of uh, this expression and uh, right, it is uh, W times X tilde. X tilde is like this. Okay, so put it there. But again, because of orthogonality, this expression doesn't, this term doesn't matter. Only this term will matter, and then it will excite this again delta function and things like that. Uh, and ultimately, it will turn out to be something like this only. Okay. Here is the delta function which will come into the when come into place when expected operator it goes inside the integral. So this is nothing but by definition q. So it turns out to be q z transpose sort of thing. Okay. okay. Now going back to this actually, the, okay. Strictly speaking, this uh, there is uh, okay. The, so there is uh, no q there. I mean q k doesn't make too much sense because it's a continuous time. Okay. It is evaluated at time tk, then just qk. All right, so this is what it is actually. Okay, so all right, now expression for p dot is p dot is like this by definition. So again, you separate it out these two terms, and this term plus the same term transpose again. So this term happens to be something like this. So expected value of all that, and then expect a e expected value x tilde x tilde transpose is something like this, plus g e okay, w times this actually. Okay. The expected value will come all the way and sit here actually. The w is a random variable, remember that, so it will get coupled with that. But uh, I mean this this quantity is nothing but p by definition. So a times p plus this quantity okay, is nothing but we just derived it as half of q z transpose. So, we put that there and it will end up with this. So, p dot is happens to be this term plus the same term transpose. So, that is why you get a p plus p is a symmetric matrix. So, p transpose a transpose means p times a transpose here. Okay. And once you expand this transpose, it will become p transpose a transpose, but p transpose is same as p. So, that is p and a transpose here. So, a p plus p a transpose plus this quantity will remain exactly same, but half will go now. So it will have something like this. That's what we told. I mean, this p dot takes the expression of like this actually. All right. So we got an expression for uh, for p dot now basically. So that's all we probably needed. So to implement that actually. So how do you implement really? We have this uh, system dynamics here, okay, and we have this measurement equation in discrete time. We initialize it again. Okay, and p naught uh, minus also needs to be initialized. So gain computation can happen this way. Same thing as before. Okay. All right. So this update can also happen as same thing as before. We don't have to derive again. We derive everything because these are very similar to what you have done in discrete time system. I mean discrete time uh, platform. Only thing is the update equation, or sorry, the prediction equation, the propagation of equation sort of thing. Can happen now using some sort of higher accuracy numerical integration, high accuracy basically. In other words, this can be retained as something like continuous time expression, and then using this higher order numerical integration schemes, you can actually propagate it with much lesser uh, error actually. Okay. That is the only difference. But when you do this, uh, this p dot expression be careful, p dot expression like uh, LTI system do not, uh, I mean, like continuous time uh, system do not use it. This uh, additional term is not there, it stops here actually. P dot is P A plus, I mean sorry, A P plus P A transpose plus E Q Z transpose. That one more additional term what we had in, uh, I mean, con pure continuous time uh, derivation process where measurement was also assumed to be like a purely continuous variable is not there basically. Okay. So, just be aware of that. So, otherwise, the implementation is fairly similar to what we do. Uh, very similar to what we do in discrete time domain. The only difference is probably in the propagation stage, you use continuous time expression and then excite some sort of a higher order numerical integration theme to propagate it in a much better sense basically.
So, that is how this this platform. Now, now going back to this idea of uh, this uh, prediction correction prediction correction things like that we can now graduate ourselves and tell okay well we know, know something so that we can uh, actually think about handling non-linear systems as well basically. Let us see in a, in a short while now. So, couple of comments here first of all this p dot expression is something is, is a continuous time Lyapunov equation now because this non-linear term is no more there in terms of p basically. Right. So, it uh, uh, this p dot expression had a p p transpose and things like that, that term is no more there. So, it boils down to be something like a linear differential equation in, in the form of p and it takes somewhat close to this expression of what is called as Lyapunov equation. Yep. Uh, that is just an observation actually. Yeah. And then this continuous discrete common filter facilitates the uses of non uniform delta t also ok that is another important point. We really do not have to have that uh, this up this intervals t naught to t 1, t 1 to t 2 and all the intervals need not be same basically. So, prediction can go on as long as there is no no measurement information and as soon as there is a measurement information it is a valid information by the way. Uh, we will talk about that what is called as outlier and all that is not there. So, if you consider that as a valid information then uh, as long as it does not come we can continue to operate on prediction mode as long as there is a valid information comes to the sensor we can update it actually. So, this does not tell that ok this, there has to be a uniform delta t there is no reason for doing that actually ok. So, that is another advantage ok. All right. So, you use this uh, continuous time expressions to propagate this way. So, do not get confused that these, these expressions are not there, they are still there embedded into this this actually ok this equation basically. Start with some initial condition propagate to the next time step actually. So, when you propagate uh, this essentially you start with some con condition at k and you propagate to k plus 1 minus okay. implicitly it happens actually. All right. So finally, after all this, we are uh, we are at a stage where we can actually talk about EKF. And if you remember this, uh, my very first comment about Kerman filter, uh, the Kerman filter has become quite popular and, and quite uh, vast applications uh, and things like that because of this platform, this external Kerman filter. And fortunately, it it works for a variety of problems actually. Okay, even though it's a concept and it is uh, there is no rigorous proof and things like that. Still, it, uh, it it operates. Uh, I mean, it uh, works successfully for for many many cases actually. So that's why it is is quite popular. So let us see that. Before we derive uh, or uh, outline the concept, some some facts to remember. First thing is uh, nonlinear estimation problems are are considerably much more difficult than the linear problems in general. Okay, and EKF is just an idea, and it is really not a cure for everything. In other words. If you have a typical peculiar problem with uh, high nonlinearity or maybe kind of non Gaussian uh, noise or color noise, things like that, then EKF may fail also. So, just be aware of that. Okay. The problem with nonlinear system is that uh, the Gaussian input does not necessarily produce a, a Gaussian output. Okay. So, that is that's the uh, one of the major difficulties of uh, this nonlinear systems in general, actually. So, yeah, but however, the, the nice thing is e, the EKF is even though it is not uh, really optimum that uh, it has been successfully applied in many nonlinear systems over the decades. So, in a variety of applications and that is what I have been insisting on actually. Okay, what is the fundamental assumption? The, there is a nice idea here it tells you that uh, the fundamental assumption in EKF design is that the, the true state x t is sufficiently close to the estimated state x at of t at all time. Okay. So, our estimate is not really bad at any time including initial guess by the way okay. that is the fundamental assumption and hence it requires that we really have a rather reasonably good initial guess for x at of t as well actually. And all the time it will assume that okay, my true state is, is close to the estimated state and hence I can I can actually represent the system dynamics as some sort of a linearized system dynamics around this estimated value because the, the error between estimated and true is, is not high that is the assumption actually. Okay. All right, so, uh, with all that fact in mind let us uh, go to the EKF domain 
and first we will see this continuous continuous ok that means everything happens in continuous domain sort of thing but ultimately we will end up with continuous discrete form also basically. All right, so when we talk about continuous continuous formulation, we have this form this problem x dot is f of x u t plus g t w t and y is nothing but h of x t plus v t. Everything is continuous, even measurement is assumed to be a kind of a continuous variable with the very high sampling rate and all that actually. Okay. All right, the, the other assumption is f and h are also continuously differentiable functions. Okay, and as usual W and V are assumed to be uncorrelated zero mean Gaussian white noise actually. So, those are those standard assumptions are there with us. Now, this is the concept that facilitates EKF. What you are telling is the, the true state is can be represented as something like this. Obviously, it can be represented always like this something like true state is estimated state plus error in estimation and that is by definition. But what you are assuming is that x tilde is small and that, that is where you can bring in this uh, this linearized concepts and all that actually. Okay. So, when you are when you, when you write something like this, this expression what you had in system dynamics now can be written something like this using Taylor series. Okay. So, using Taylor series uh, and neglecting higher order terms, okay, we can go back and tell okay, this expression I want to expand in terms of uh, Taylor series around x set of t. Okay. So, the, the very first term will take x set, the so second term will be del f by del x evaluated at x, x equal to x set okay, times x minus x set and x minus x set is x tilde basically. Okay. So, right. So, this is what it is the first term and then this term Jacobian matrix sort of thing into x minus x set. Okay. And similarly, you can write uh, this this nonlinear function also. If we expand using Taylor series, we can write it something like this. Actually. Now, what uh, we we evaluate the expected value of this this function. What we derived here, we if we take expected value of both sides, and it turns out to be expected value of first term plus this is a constant. Uh, this kind of a known numbers basically. There is no random variable here, so this can be. Uh, I mean, the expected operator can be post inside here where this is a deterministic quantity sort of thing. Okay. Now, x e expected value of x is by definition it is x set. Okay. So, this is the nice observ observation actually by, by definition it is nothing but x set. So, it all turns out that x set minus x set. So, it gets cancelled out altogether basically. So, essentially what it tells you that expected value of this quantity which which contains some sort of random value quantities and all is nothing but that quantity only. A, as long as this linear expression remains valid, I mean linearized expression remains valid up to first order term basically okay. and that is the beauty. Okay. So, we uh, we take expected value of this is nothing but the first term plus this term uh, into 0 basically I mean that is that is the whole uh, beautiful observation there. So, th so this, get, this gives us a lot of simplicity basically. So, expected value of this is nothing but that. Similarly, the expected value of h is nothing but this. Okay, exactly same thing is that again expected value of x will come here and x set minus x set will become 0 basically. Okay, so, it turns out to be like this. So, what you can represent is if you go if you go back to our observer dynamics sort of thing, we get motivated by this this is uh, this observations and tell ok, because expected value sense this this does not play a role and it all only has that part of it. So, how about proposing an estimated dynamics or observer dynamics to be something like this the first term is kept as it is plus Kalman gain times innovation. Innovation is a true observation I mean true output minus the expected output or predicted output basically. Okay. And predicted output which is expected value of this is nothing but that I mean that that, that observation again helps us actually putting it there. Okay. So, we have this x set dot is nothing but f of this plus Kalman gain times innovation which is y minus h of this. Okay where y hat is nothing but that ok. This is a predicted output sort of thing. So, this is your observer dynamics. Now, what is error dynamics now? Error is defined as x minus x hat. So, x, x tilde dot ok is x dot minus x hat dot and x dot is this quantity minus x hat dot is nothing but that quantity now. Okay. This is our observer dynamics. So, put it back here and whatever you know here and then first term and first term can be put it this way and rest of the term can be kept out actually. So, 
this first term and first term we combine here and then common gain terms which is one coming from here and uh, and one coming from here we put them together plus g w minus k e v g w coming from here and k e k e times v comes from here with a positive sign here but ultimately there is a negative sign so this is what it is. Now, if you see this quantities okay, you go back to this minus I mean this this quantity okay, this this minus that now. So, this minus that is nothing but this quantity basically. So, we we put it back there that quantity and similarly if you talk about these two quantities it is nothing but this quantity now. Okay. So, we put it back okay. the total quantity what I mean okay. this this quantity the full uh, and this quantity the full. Okay. So, put it back plus g w minus k e v. Now, by definition we define this is del f by del x uh, evaluated at x set is nothing but a of t. It keeps on changing because x set keeps on changing. So, they, we, they are not a constant matrix, but just time varying a of t sort of thing. Similarly, this is nothing but c of t. Okay. So, ultimately what you will end up with is x set uh, x tilde dot uh, error dynamics is a minus k e c okay, times x tilde plus g w minus k e v where this is all time varying and uh, this can be defined as something like a naught. So, the beautiful observation is the aerodynamics is exactly same exactly same as the aerodynamics derived for time varying linear system case and hence everything else remains same we do not have to derive, derive it again we just simply can write it actually. Okay. So, hence the dynamics of the covariance matrix we can straight away write it using this uh, linear time uh, I mean this time varying linear system case we just go there see that and it uh, write it exactly same because the error dynamics is exactly same. So, we think the, the error covariance matrix dynamics will also remain exactly same the already are there. The only thing is remember A of t and C of t are not really given to us, but they have to be evaluated every time at the most uh, updated value of this x set actually and that is the only difference. So, what is the summary of continuous time uh, EKF? We have the system dynamics uh, and our uh, initialization has to happen first, then we compute the gain that way and then we propagate it at that way. We have this filter dynamics or, or propagation dynamics, we can use it to propagate x set of t and we have this uh, covariance matrix dynamics which you can use to propagate p of t actually. Okay. The only difference is A and C has to be evaluated every time around this x set basically. So, that is the summary of continuous time e k f. Now, how about continuous discrete e k f uh, where uh, we can merge these concepts again and here the question is you have the system dynamics as continue in continuous time whereas, the measurements are available only at discrete interval of time. Okay. So, what is the idea here when there is no measurement that means, so without the availability of measurement we can propagate the state and covariance dynamics from x k plus 2 x k plus uh, x k plus 1 minus and similarly p k plus 2 p k plus 1 minus actually. Okay. But we can propagate now using the non-linear system dynamics. Okay. We really do not have to use a truncated linear dynamics and all that actually. We can go back to that and, and tell okay this is anyway a propagation. Uh, so, we can use that the, the real non-linear system dynamics to propagate. Okay, but the covariance dynamics we cannot derive it that way because it that is difficult. So, we can still use the linear covariance dynamics actually, but remember it is actually it turns out because uh, there is no measurement in between actually because this this covariance dynamics had this term which which made it non-linear. It happens primarily because we have this continuous time measurement, measurement is there everywhere actually. Okay. But if it is not there this term is not there. Okay. So, we will end up with this p dot is some sort of a linear differential equation this one plus this one plus the last term actually. So, that is what you will use. So, you we propagate this p dot using this uh, this linear covariance dynamics sort of thing. Okay. But as soon as the measurements is available you update it and you update from minus to plus value here for the state and minus to plus value for the covariance matrix also. So, what is the summary again and discrete time continuous discrete e f we have uh, this form okay, which is x dot is uh, something like f of x u t plus g t w t y is like this this is continuous time, but this is discrete time. So, we initialize both the state and, and covariance matrix 
okay. when you compute the gain okay wherever there is a measurement coming that point of time it will operate we quickly compute the gain use it for update and update uh, covariance matrix also and then go back to this uh, this dynamics in continuous time that we know and propagate it actually so using the nonlinear dynamics we propagate from xk hat plus to xk plus 1 hat minus and using this uh, linear uh, error covariance matrix equation okay we propagate from pk plus uh, pk hat plus to pk plus 1 hat uh, minus actually the thing is we have to evaluate this matrix here okay and this has to be evaluated all the time actually okay using this uh, x hat of t okay. Okay, so this quantity, this CK minus, has to be evaluated, and AT has to be evaluated while propagating this. This is the only difference. Otherwise, we are pretty clear how to operate EKF now. Actually, so the equations are not difficult, or no, it's not difficult to understand really. But uh, there are many issues there, which makes the implementation of EKF a little bit tricky issue. So in, so in some sense, there is a little bit of art involved, and experience comes uh, very handy actually here. But there are several other ideas uh, uh, around EKF. The first thing that comes to mind is something called iterated EKF. Okay. So this idea is like that. One way of improving the performance EK, performance of EKF is to apply the local iterations to repeatedly calculate these these guys. Okay, and each time by linearizing about the most recent update. Now, what's the whole idea there? Wherever there is a measurement, we quickly compute the gain. Okay, we come. We quickly compute CK minus one. I uh, mean CK minus plus. Uh, sorry, CK minus first, and then quickly compute Kalman gain using this CK minus, and then we compute this. Now the moment we update this equation x x k plus uh, x hat k plus, we have updated this value to this value. Now the moment we update this, okay, this value. Then again, we can evaluate it about that value. Why up, why operating it based on a previously predicted value? We don't have to do that. We have updated value, so we take that and uh, put this uh, updated value here. So we get a new C. Using the new C, we can compute a new gain, and then again come back and update, and this cycle can continue basically. So that is called iterated E K. We can keep on doing that. Okay, and that's called iterated E K. And you can actually fix a number of iterations. There is no point in waiting until stability and things like that, and then proceed further. So, like sometimes some people can have two, five, ten. I mean, you can fix it based on your computational platform and computational capability, things like that, and then operate it based on that. It is still based on E K, external Kalman filter, but it is now doing several iterations based on the same measurement actually. Just because your your C matrix is changing, basically. Because your the moment you update it, uh, there is a different value of x, and hence your uh, your C matrix changes, and again you you keep on iterating on that basically. So that's the first idea, iterated EKF. And there is a parallel development which is also called linearized uh, Kalman filter. Well, uh, it is actually a, people thought about it initially. Uh, it is a kind of a competitor for EKF and all that actually. But let's see what's the idea there. Okay. So idea here is something uh, like this. This approach involves linearization about a nominal state trajectory, which is selected a priori instead of the current estimate. So what happens in estimating about current estimate is the transients become quite bad. Initially, you don't have any idea about what you are doing, or the error value can be very high. So the very fundamental assumption that uh, your true state is close to the estimated state uh, or best available information. Is not there, so that is the fundamental difficulty of a PKF. So people thought, well, in the, that is the case. Why do I bother about that? I, I really don't have to do that. Now, all that I need to know is some sort of a linear approximation, linearized approximation of the nonlinear system dynamics. So in that sense, they told, okay, I can, can I can assume something like a x bar of t, which is selected a priori, and I will linearize it about it actually. Okay, how to what the meaning of x bar of t? Let's say A satellite orbits and things like that. So you talk about orbit cor orbital corrections and all that. Actually, suppose suppose you want to do that. So if the satellite has a kind of a known orbit, the known orbit information is already available. Basically, so so using that information, we can we can think of uh, operating based on. I mean, you can think of 
uh, having a common filter implementation based on that assumption really. Okay. So, then what you tell is okay, f o, this f of x u is nothing but f of x bar because that is what I, I know, okay. but the, the fact is this way uh, these guys will not cancel out anymore. Okay. If it is x h then x h minus x h was there, but now it will not cancel out it will it will remain actually. So, a of t is uh, evaluated at uh, x bar now del f by del x evaluated x, x bar and c of t is del s by del x evaluated x bar. Okay. Again I am telling uh, if you take expected value of all these expressions then expected value of f of x uh, this term will not go basically this will become x h minus x h bar which we will see recently. So, if I take now this expression is from Taylor series expansion and keeping first order terms only. Okay. Now, if you put expected operator here then this is uh, first term is as it is, but second term this this term will not go this will remain actually okay. because this is no more x uh, x bar uh, so this is no more x set earlier it was x set. So, x set minus x set was 0 now it will stay. So, keep that okay. keep that uh, a t times x hat minus uh, x bar and all that. So, so, the propose this equation now. So, we tell okay, x hat dot is this quantity okay. what you see here what you see here plus Kalman gain times the actual measurements minus minus predicted measurement predicted measurement is this quantity okay so minus this how everything actually okay so put that, that way so y hat is obviously if you if you go back to this expression this is by definition known as y hat is nothing but this one plus c times this this quantity actually what you see here so, the covariance matrix can be derived and you can uh, derive it fully now uh, you can go back and derive this so something like p dot will turn out to be the full expression again, where a and c have to be evaluated around x bar not x set. All right. So, that is uh, linearized LKF linearized Kalman filter basically, okay. but uh, in principle it does not give too much of a benefit. It, uh, I mean, honestly, it gives us algebra complexity and things like that. So, people have thought, okay, why to bother so much about it actually. So, the most uh, popular form is still there is Kalman filter, but sometimes LKF is, uh, is probably beneficial to use it initially, okay, to get a some form of some sort of conditioning of these numbers before you excite EKF and all that. So, the transient information can, transient performance can be relatively better, okay. So, that is the utility of uh, this linearized Kalman filter in general. All right. So, as I told before Kalman filter has several several concerns and all that. So, for let us see some of these comments and the other things. So, uh, first of all LKF is, uh, is less accurate than EKF since uh, x bar is usually not close to x of t. Okay. So, what happens if you do this LKF in that form, your nominal trajectory is always there. So, even though you have a better estimate, you are unable to use it actually subsequently that is the whole idea there. But again LKF can lead to this priori computation of KET which can be stored and used in online computation which is not possible in EKF. So, sometimes as I told to, to avoid large initial chartering of EKF, one can start with LKF and then switch over to EKF. Okay. However, uh, okay. uh, it is often possible okay, this however, it is uh, it is often possible to start the EKF ahead of time. Uh, so, that means, when you when you want to kind of uh, close in uh, or modify the uh, your control guidance whatever based on the estimated uh, information. Okay. So, you can actually start the EKF little more time in advance basically. So, then these transients are expected to die down by the time you are uh, you are interested to operate based on this estimation information. Okay. For example, if you think about missile guidance application and all that in the in the terminal phase you largely are interested in seeker based information because that is much more accurate. But that filtering can be actually initialized based on radar data, so a little before, little, a little time before, so that your uh, your better values of gains and other things are available by the time the seeker uh, starts operating, or you close your your guidance based on the seeker data. 
So, that kind of application I mean usually it is done that way invariably because the initial transients can be very bad. So, you start it little bit ahead of time and then tell ok by the time I want to use filtered information transients are right down actually ok. So, essentially if you do that then this necessity of uh, first starting with LKF and then switching over to EKF and all that is also does normally does not arise actually. And the philosophy of local iteration that is uh, LKF can also be implemented here again okay, that leads to this this iterated LKF concept sort of thing actually. Yeah. But very rarely again we will uh, we'll hear uh, terms like LKF in literature and all that it is not very popular anymore because of no, no specific advantage over EKF actually that is that is the bottom line here. So, there are various recommendations and issues for successful implementation of EKF let us study one by one. Uh, first of all, how do you tune it actually? Okay, that is a major issue, and the very first thing that comes to mind is something like this uh, fix R based on sensor characteristics. So, based on whatever sensors are available, we fix a number for R, okay. Then select P naught to be sufficiently high. In other words, we throw every information about initial um, value and you tell whatever initial uh, value of the state that you are guessing, this is large error actually, okay. So, we take uh, P naught to be very high sufficiently high and uh, that is some ramification that if you take P naught high then it is going to converge much faster and all that actually that is uh, a tangent can be high, but it can converge much faster. So, after these two after you fix uh, R based on the sensor characteristics uh, and then select a P to be high then what remains it remains is Q ok. So, then you have to vary this Q up and down in other words tune Q obtains uh, until obtaining sufficiently satisfactory results actually. So, that is a kind of a universal recommendation for, for uh, implementation of EKF. And again going back to that same thing the filter should run sufficiently ahead of time prior to its usage. So, that the error stabilizes before its actual usage ok. Otherwise, uh, the, the initial error can be very large and the associated control guidance everything can go bad it can destabilize the closed loop system. So, this is a small kind of comment, but it is very critical for practical application actually ok. Also keep the measurement equation linear wherever possible because uh, see there are two choices typically either we work with uh, linear system dynamics uh, nonlinear measurement equation or you work with the linear measurement equation and nonlinear system dynamics. And typically if you have this uh, formulas I mean again going back to aerospace applications you have this uh, probably kind of a missile guidance problem where in x and h you are looking at the your dynamics and all that suppose the missile is here and some target is here and the information typically comes in the form of something like uh, r theta ok this this angle. The sensors will look in the framework r theta, but your inertial coordinates in the form of Cartesian coordinates ok. Okay. And hence, if you if you formulate this dynamics in terms of x direction, y di I mean h direction, and also to like uh, dynamics of target in terms of x and h direction, things like that, and it turns out to be something like a kind of a Cartesian problem actually. Okay, the, so in other words, system dynamics can be in the form of Cartesian coordinates, where the measurements can come from the polar coordinates actually. So now we have two choices. If you if you stick to that, okay, what happens is the polar coordinate information has to be converted back into the state space equation. That means, the r has to be expressed in the form of, of something like uh, delta x whole square plus delta h whole square like that actually uh, square root and theta also I mean 10 theta is uh, del s by del, del x and all that. So, in other words the measurement equation becomes nonlinear actually ok. So, what about looking at in alternate sense in other words you tell ok my system dynamics is in the already in the form of polar coordinate. So, instead of uh, this Cartesian coordinate dynamics I will talk about polar coordinate dynamics then what because my measurement is already coming in the polar coordinates ok and that will make my measurement equation linear actually ok. And there are many observations from practicing people and uh, some literature and things like that that people uh, have observed. Now, many times it may not give any specific advantage looking at this way or that way, but sometimes it can uh, it can have some advantage when we look at when we formulate the problem where the output equations are typically linear, where the state equation can go nonlinear. 
So, either way you have to truncate anyway. So, somewhere you have to evaluate C and somewhere you have to evaluate A. So, the moment you evaluate that using Taylor series, there is some sort of truncation actually. Now, the question is where you want to do that and the recommendation from some practicing people and things like that is that typically you prefer that the output equation remains linear actually. Because there is no theoretical justification for that. Let me be very clear on that actually. All right. So, this is uh, this is what it is. What is the next one? Okay. Care should be taken or sufficient care should be taken rather to avoid numerical ill conditioning and that can happen due to several reasons including truncation uh, errors and all that especially in early computers the uh, the truncation errors were punishing because uh, of this uh, this digit I mean this floating point computation and all were very limited actually. So, you are truncating all the numbers very quickly and then that was the major issue. Now, that this 64 bits and all that if you really, really want to implement may not be a major issue, but still there are issues uh, because of numerical problems. For example, uh, many of these uh, things can be written in several books including this book which I will again list out at the end of this lecture, but there are several uh, improvements of algorithms have also happened over the period of time which will try to avoid this, uh, this kind of issues actually. In more of that you can read. So, for example, this p dot equation or this update equation that we discussed in discrete time domain, we want to use the symmetric expression uh, of propagation rather than the asymmetric expression basically, even though that is a simplified formula. So, this, things like that be aware of that actually. And here the care, again the, the care should be taken to eliminate outliers uh, and outliers is something like a kind of innovation actually. So, you have this innovation uh, coming into picture in in our uh, implementation thing ok. So, this uh, sorry here somewhere ok, this term the actual output minus predicted output. So, this term has contains innovation actually. If it is very high for whatever reason at a particular instant of time or couple of weeks discrete time interval and things like that to tell there is something wrong might have happened because in the sensor or somewhere. So, that it is it is not giving me proper values. So, let me not correct everything based on everything blindly based on whatever I see. If I do that my my things can go very bad actually. So, let us not do that. So, it is possible I mean I will do that based only if the error is not very high ok. The error is uh, reasonably ok then I will update thinking that my measurements are good. The error is very high at some point of time then it will ok something bad has really happened I do not want to kind of account for those things. So, I will ignore that rather and continue on the prediction mode basically. Ok, so that is another thing. But also remember some data rejection methods are also available, a little bit formal methods and all that actually you can see that. And bottom line is EKF is little bit fragile and uh, in other words only a narrow band of design variables uh, P naught R and Q will exist. So, do not lose hope and have sufficient patience in, in tuning these variables okay, for any given application. There are some recommendations that we discussed here okay, this way. You can start like that and then uh, change values and all that. Uh, so, that is that's the tuning process actually. Okay, that needs to be done a little bit uh, carefully with some, some sense of uh, I mean you should, you should have sufficient patience to do that actually. It ultimately, it is going to work and when it works, it works wonderfully actually. So, have some patience to tune up uh, lecture. Then there are a uh, lot of consistency issues in Kerman filter and there are lot of checks and bounds available in Kerman filter. So, there is something like sigma bound test, something like normalized error square test, something like normalized mean error test, something like autocorrelation test, something like Kramer round inequality and things like that. So, there are various tests and uh, always subject your results with respect to some of these tests. And invariably, it should have sigma bound test. You know, in other words, you, your p matrix gives us lot of information, and the diagonal elements of the p matrix are essentially sigma squares, basically. So, if you collect sigma and plus uh, plot this plus or minus sigma or plus or minus two sigma and things like that, ultimately, starting from any initial condition, the error should come within that actually. Okay, so that is called sigma bound test. And ultimately, I mean, in any uh, experiment, this result should be kind of a must actually. Okay? Otherwise, there is no confidence on. Uh, what you are getting. You may get a stabilized value or uh, which may look good, but your p matrix may tell something and your uh, your estimation may somewhere else actually 
So, that uh, if that fails then there is no sufficient confidence on the results basically. Similarly, other things can also be sensed whiteness test also so the autocorrelation whiteness test all that. So, that means it turns out that your innovation quantity if you uh, test it out you have uh, from a very random variable uh, for, from a white noise you have taken out a kind of a continuous signal. So, it does not matter the, the innovation will again turn out to be white actually. So, we can think about doing this test also uh, and things like that actually. Okay. So, some of the difficulties in practice uh, computer round of errors are always concerns uh, no matter how whatever digit of accuracy we want to operate for a long period of time then this round of errors can can still have a major concern. Especially for onboard computers that are still not based on very powerful computing and all that where round of errors can be very punishing ok. So, be aware of that. And something like if you have some error propagation happening and you do not check it uh, that that unchecked error propagation can cause uh, disasters actually ok. And asymmetry of covariance matrix is a, is a large symptom of numerical degradation and can you, you watch out for uh, P minus P transpose norm if you evaluate that will give 0 if it is uh, symmetric and uh, if it is asymmetric uh, it will give you start popping up some numbers and all that which uh, which can be thought of as some sort of a uh, indication that things are going bad actually. Solution of Ricard equation uh, there are ways of doing that and there is something called square root filtering and this talks about some solution and via holistic degree factorization and all that. Uh, uh, I mean these are these are all the issues of, of implementation really. So, it is not like blindly I will implement something get some answers actually. Yeah. So, this using this factorization if you solve Ricard equation and then use that then turns out to be much better actually. And in case of there, there are some large initial errors and you have absolutely no clue of how to guess it and things like that. There are ideas like information filtering available and more I mean say the filtering is itself it can be a course and all that. So, there are many many ideas there I suggest that you read some of that actually. So, some points to remember uh, nonlinear estimation problems are considerably more difficult than linear problems in general. Again EKF is just an idea and not cure for everything ok. The problem with nonlinear system is that Gaussian input does not necessarily produce Gaussian output ok. All these things I have talked it ok. So, the, let us talk about uh, limitation of EKF and uh, limitations turns out to be significant also. First limitation is linearization can in introduce significant errors ok. Because that uh, problem is highly nonlinear, linearization is not a cure typically. There is no general convergence guarantee and convergence observations are there many times you may get it, but in general there is no convergence guarantee at all. So, works in general, but in some cases its performance can be surprisingly bad. So, it typically it happens to be very unreliable for colored noise and so some ideas like shaping filter is, is available where you take a little bit subsystem and then put it to white noise as input. So, that output can be kind of the noise that you are looking for not necessarily white. So, that little uh, uh, it is uh, that, that little uh, blocked uh, I mean this uh, system dynamics can introduce additional states and things like that this called shaping filter actually. We have discussed that before and we will uh, take an example also at next class onwards. Okay. Next class so we will typically take an example in one of the lectures later to see what is the shaping filter how to implement all that actually. So, there are necessity for beyond EKF and the need essentially turns out to be because of uh, system dynamics is typically non-linear. Noise does not necessarily satisfy Gaussian PDF ok. So, non-Gaussian noise actually and also we have this uh, see noise is also a physical phenomena it cannot happen extremely randomly basically. Noise happens because of certain uh, char characteristics. So, uh, assuming that it is completely uncorrelated. That means, whatever happens uh, now is completely ignorant of what happened immediately before now it is very unrealistic also. So, uh, correlated noise or color noise is also always a concern ok. White noise uh, I mean we assumed white noise it has given lot of zeros in the derivation and uh, made this derivation lot simpler, but that does not mean that it is close to reality actually. So, we have this correlated color noise then what actually. So, so these issues will start to popping up actually. So, characteristics of this uh, this uh, advanced filter are something like this they are often approximate uh, not very good in some sense. They sacrifice theoretical accuracy in, in favor of practical constraints. So, what we are talking here we are talking here something like uh, advanced filtering which is something like something called H infinity filtering 
something called particle filtering things like that actually those are available okay there are bayesian based filterings also bayesian belief based and particle filtering happens to be one of the case actually that way so these essentially sacrifice theoretical accuracy in for in favor of practical constraints and considerations like robustness adaptation numerical feasibility like that actually will become issues there so essentially the attempt to cover the limitations of bk and run into some other issue if you can solve it then turns out to be good actually all right so we going too much beyond is not possible but little bit beyond uh, which is called as uncentered kernel filter we can have a glimpse of that uh, not a very detailed sense actually so what happens here is uh, motivation is something like that there are tuning difficulties of ekf we know that so can it be relaxed and in other words uh, can it be little lesser difficulty that way then the second motivation is uh, this change of the characteristics of the noise pdf through nonlinear transformation okay you can still characterize as some sort of a time varying gaussian pdf it's not stationary okay it still can you can you can interpret that as a gaussian pdf but it's not necessarily stationary in other words uh, this mean and variance will keep on varying actually okay so if you consider it that way then uh, is there any idea that you can update this mean and uh, i mean mean and covariance of this this pdf itself actually so one uh, line of thought which essentially started from uh, from oxford university uk is something like this this uh, their idea is like okay Gaussian distribution properties uh, can rather be propagated easily than the covariance matrix itself. Actually, so we propagate some of these distribution properties, uh, something like sigma mu and all, then evaluate this covariance there. Once you do that, so there is no need of propagating this covariance matrix and running into difficulties. Actually, and it also gives us a platform. If you necessary, if necessary, we can uh, we can approximate the. Higher order moments of the distribution after transformation as, as well. If you take more and more points, what is what are called as sigma points and all that. If you consider more and more sigma points, it's possible to compute higher order moments also. The moment it is higher order moments are also assumed to be guaranteed to be same and things like that. Your accuracy becomes more and more better basically. So this is a typical picture that uh, that appears in many of the literature and things like that. Uh, I mean, it's a very conceptually very intuitive picture. Turns out, let us start with the distribution with a mean and some sort of a covariance bound around that. And if you if you really propagate through a nonlinear function, it takes us different shape actually. So mean can go transfer somewhere else, and then the covariance can take a different shape altogether actually. Now the whole idea is how best we can approximate this. Now it turns out that if we if we transform this through this uh, this uh, propagation ideas, then p y can take a very different shape actually. Okay. So essentially, the true mean and variance can be somewhere else. Okay, this is your true mean and true variance, whereas the predicted thing turns out to be this is the mean and that the variance. So obviously, the properties of the Gaussian distribution gets distorted actually. What you should have actually got is something like this. Now the question is, okay, how about random sampling? You can you can do thousands and thousands of sampling and then pass everything through this linear nonlinear function and then reevaluate the mean and covariance again. And then it will turn out to be close to that. I mean, that's how we can, you can get an idea of what is going on here. Actually, now the question is: these thousands and thousand points is not a feasible answer. It is not possible at all to do that. So it turns out: okay, can you do that in a minimum number of samples, basically? So that is the whole thing that turns out to be uh, some sigma point concepts and all that. So if I can selectively select, I mean, kind of judiciously select these points. And it turns out to be some Eisen vector properties and all that will come into picture here. Okay, if I judiciously select these points, these are called sigma points. And if I pass these sigma points and evaluate quickly this mean and covariance, then it turns out to be very close to what it should be actually. Okay, that's the whole beautiful thing here. There is a minimum number of points using which I'll pa I'll try I will pass all these through the same nonlinear function. And after I pass it, they'll they'll fall somewhere somewhere, and then. Uh, I can quickly evaluate this mean and covariance, and again I will select a bunch of another sigma points based on this new distribution, and then proceed further actually like that. So this is a simple example to demonstrate these ideas in this Dan Simon book. It's a very good book again. Uh, it's a polar coordinate to Cartesian coordinate. You have arth cos theta or sin theta. If you do that, if you do this linearized covariance, it turns out to be somewhere like this. If you do this sigma point propagation and, and find out again, then it turns out to be very close to what it should be, and that is all the whole idea which led to this this uncentered 
Kerman filter sort of thing. More details you can see it in this book also. Okay. So we have this uh, liquid very quickly. We have this linear dynamics, all in discrete domain. Measurement equations also like that. The entire equation concepts are taken from this book. More on that, uh, there is a good uh, chapter around that. You can you can read it actually. So this is what it is, and then there are some uh, some other thing that I saw from a different literature. I put thought of putting it here. What do you mean by sigma points actually? So sigma points is a set of weighted sampling points and things like that. So you can uh, one on the tip and, uh, and then four are outside and things like that. You can see actually. Okay. So the, these sigma points are propagated through the two nonlinear function using this functional evaluation alone, and there is no analytical derivative used in order to generate this posterior sigma points. These are uh, selection. We pass it through the nonlinear function, and there is no derivation de derivative information involved. Jacobian matrix is completely avoided actually. Okay. Then the posterior statistics are calculated, or rather approximately calculated, using this this information actually. This is, these definitions are taken from this reference really. Alright, so how do you implement it without derivation again? Uh, uh, you initialize this uh, the initial condition and uh, noise. Co I mean the covariance matrix. Then select a bunch of sigma points, something like this. Okay, one to two n. Sometimes two n plus one people recommend. Sometimes two n. Uh, this uh, center point is type of kind. Of sometimes you are little, uh, you know, not there basically. So you use the selection of sigma points. Uh, I mean, you select a bunch of sigma points like this. One to two n. Okay, and n is the number of states. Remember that. So first two n. I mean, first n are evaluated square root of this, and then the rest evaluated of this actually. Okay. K plus one. Uh, I mean the the negative of that. So it, these are symmetrically placed basically. Remember, the, the, the as long as there is a positive definite matrix, we can talk about a square root of that also basically. So we can do that. Then transform the sigma points, and then calculate the new mean and covariance. This is as good as that. And once you have that, uh, okay, you select the sigma points again based on the updated value, and then proceed further. That's the whole idea there basically. So transformation of sigma points can be done using the same nonlinear um, equation that we know. So there should not be too much of a difficulty, and uh, you can based on this, you can have this predicted measurement as well actually. So how to implement it? You, after you do this uh, this transformation, there you evaluate this p y, p x y, and then evaluate this Kalman gain, and then uh, then update and things like that. Update the state and update the covariance again. So this very quickly, what it should be done? Very easy to implement also, in my view, and computationally it is not very taxing either, basically. So there are other concepts which I am not talking here in this this course. There are concepts like particle filter and all that. We'll deviate too much uh, other side instead of uh, retaining these optimality concepts and all that actually. So these are based on Bayesian will believe and things like that. But there are also uh, nice concepts out there. If you are interested, you can see some of these particle filtering ideas again. There is a nice diagram in this book also. I thought I will put it here. Uh, this is something like computational effort versus increasing accuracy. So UKF, uh, well, even though the diagram is like that, I don't think it is too much computationally taxing. It may be a little bit more than UKF, but not too much. Remember, UKF you have to evaluate Jacobian matrix, whereas UKF uh, we don't actually. But UKF you have to use square root of that matrix, which is also kind of computationally taxing actually. Okay, so that is where the difficulty. So a little bit computationally more involved, but increasing accuracy. But if you have that advantage is there only when there is a nonlinear system or non-Gaussian uh, noise and all that. There is a linear Gaussian system. You are unnecessarily wasting things. You are not getting performance improvement at all actually. So be careful about what you are doing. So that's all I want to talk in uh, in filtering ideas and all that. But I have listed out a few books and references for your convenience again. And those of you who are more interested can see these books. Or the classic books actually. There is a second edition available in 2012 also about this book. Many of my derivations have been taken from this book, but also this uh, Dan Simon book is also very good, and other things are also there. Especially this one is very practical uh, related to missile guidance and things like that. And there is a first book that appeared; it's very popular among many sev several teachers and authors and things like that. And you can also see this; uh, these are written by practicing people with very good practical implications. How to implement numerical schemes and things like that. And I also put some of the publications uh, which appeared. Uh, this is the first uh, original famous paper from Kalman, and it was appeared in the SME Journal Basic Engineering. Then these two papers uh, are really nice stories out there, uh, fascinating perspectives of state and parameter estimation technique, 
and then uh, relook at the concept and complete uh, competence of Kalman filter and things like that. Those of you are more interested to read fun stories and all that with some degree of insight that you want to gain, then you can read some of these. That is all I want to talk about Kalman filtering actually. Thank you.